So a couple months ago, I did a video on the Anchor Solix F3800. I think it's one of the best battery banks out on the market today. And that video got about 450,000 views. Now in that comment section, I had a few comments stating that, well, you couldn't run a whole house, even though I clearly showed that you could. In today's video, I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna expand my system. The question is, how long can I run my whole house? Now, I'm not gonna hook the solar panels up today. That's a different story, and we'll talk about that here in a bit. But I wanna add a second unit, and there's a way to do this and I want to see not only can it power certain things but how long will it power so I'm gonna do a whole day test on not one but two anchor Solex f 3800s see exactly what these things can and cannot handle now to hook these two up together we're gonna to have to use the double power hub and it's pretty inexpensive at like $250 compared to the anchor Solex smart hub for the home which is actually pretty cool and I think I might upgrade to that as well in the future but we're using this I'm gonna show you how this is set up now even though this thing makes it extremely easy to hook both 3800s up together there was a bit of an issue that left me scratching my head so this is a 50 amp and I need to go into my inlet box and well, I, I couldn't do that. So I had to make a different purchase for me to be able to hook this up to my inlet switch. And I just sat there for a while trying to figure it out. So what I had to do was buy an additional piece of equipment. Now I could have made this, but Home Depot was a whole pain in the butt. It probably would have been cheaper for me just to buy it. I wanted a longer cord. This is 10 foot. What I needed was a four prong 50 amp to 30 amp generator plug adapter and even though i bought this a few days ago of course they did not have that five percent coupon when i purchased mine so anyway i got it and i figured well let's just hook this bad boy up and see how long we can run the house and what we can run when we have this thing hooked up to the house all right so basically how this thing goes on the side panels and even on the new plus i believe you're going to have a couple different inlets or outlets this right here you can either hook this up to the smart home hub or the double hub which I am showing you right now. That's how we're going to hook it up. Basically, all you do is plug and play. You just open these up, and then those two cables that you have on the double power hub, well, one will go into one unit, and all you do is push in and it snaps in. Now that'll automatically lock in there, and then you just put the other end of the double power hub into the other unit. So you're only gonna be able to hook two of these up together, which is fine because you're still gonna be able to add the expansion batteries to this if you want. So this is how it looks, very simple. So now what I need to do is hook my double power hub into my inlet to run the power to my house. Now, before we hook this up, let's just be safe and shut off the main power to the house. We're gonna flip the breaker and shut everything down. Now, as mentioned in the previous video, you do not want to run both these breakers at the same time. There's a safe way of doing this, and this is an inlet safety switch for your box, meaning that if you're bringing power into the house, your main switch, your main breaker cannot be on. So what you have to do is shut off your main breaker that's feeding your house of power, bring that switch back up, and then turn on the inlet switch so you can generate power into this box but not backfeed the lines if somebody's working on them. It's very dark and it's very spooky in my house right now, but you can see all of my power's off. My refrigerator's off, my TV's off, everything is off. My garage is off, I can't see where I'm at, where I'm going. Luckily, it's somewhat daylight, but you can see I'm flipping the switch, there's nothing working, nothing going on. So now let's hook up the box. Now here's the 50 to 30 cable and the reason again i bought this from amazon instead of making it myself is i just wanted it longer and i already have my generator cable so i'm just going to hook this to that so this is my generator. you can see the four prong right there's a little key here very simple to hook this up this is the part that's going to go into the house you see this this is my inlet switch so these cables are going to go into the house and back feed that panel so how you do that is very simple I'm gonna take the one end of the cable with the 50 amp and I'm gonna plug that right into the power hub like such. That's a pretty heavy duty cable. I was pretty impressed with the quality of that. So now I'm going to plug this piece, generator cord that I already have, you can buy those as well, and plug that into the 50 to 30 amp. And now I'm gonna take the cable that I already made for the previous generator video. I'm just gonna take that. I'm gonna plug this into the inlet switch, just line it up and then twist it and that will lock in. So everything locks in and this is all gonna be water resistant if you hook this up right. So everything is ready to go. Now all I have to do is turn on a few things. My first box, I'm gonna hit the power on that, hold it in for a second, it's gonna kick on. I'm gonna to go to the second box and I'm gonna kick that on. 
And now that I have those set up, all I have to do is go to my double power hub, press down, hold the button for a couple seconds, and then this should start pushing power into my box and the light should come on. There you go. Now that my friends is real nice like. So what this means is that everything in the house is running completely off of these boxes. I have no power coming in. What time is it? Come on man, it's 8.08 a.m. Now it's 51 degrees and gloomy, which means my furnace is gonna kick on and I'm not gonna be able to hook solar up to this. So I got all of my lights on, everything on my house is now running completely off of the two 3800s. Now, what I like about this is you're paying more for electricity during the daytime on peak hours. See, my furnace is running right now. I'll, I'll tell you everything this is drawing out and then how long this will last me. But if we did have a power outage, I would bring my furnace down to about 68 or probably even further down than that. I'm gonna shut off all the stuff that I don't need. I don't need my outside lights on right now. It's not nighttime. And right now we're drawing 595 watts out of these boxes. So I'm shutting things down that I don't need. I don't need every single light. Remember, it's not about can this thing power your house? Yes, it will. But how long will it power your house? So I'm shutting down the lights on the outside, even though it's daylight, I'm just shutting down the things I don't need. What I do need is my Wi-Fi, my refrigerator, my freezers, keep my food. Now you can see that I'm pulling 314 watts out on each box. And basically what this double power hub does is pretty cool is it turns two of these systems into one system. So I still wanna bring this down a little bit if I can. Now what's cool about this is on the Anchor app, as soon as you plug this thing in, it's like a smart app, it automatically knows exactly what's going on. It's telling you that I'm using the power out of these in this system and then bringing it up through the power hub into the house and you can switch back and forth from the first and the second unit which is really really cool i think that we can get that power down a little bit more we're at 540 i do have things plugged in i have my camera bat rays charging up uh, for this video i'm not bringing in any solar though like i can bring in 2400 watts per unit but it's Ohio and it's gloomy, so I can't do that. And I wanna run the test anyway without any solar. I could probably get a couple hundred watts in if I wanted to, but you can see I'm plugged into the house. You get that green light in my inlet switch is showing me that I got the power going. So let's see what this thing can handle. And again, we're not even gonna make a dent. A, a 12,000 watts out is insanity. Now we're pulling 670 watts right now. And what will eventually start happening is I'm gonna start turning on these lights. You can see those are my kitchen lights over there. I'm gonna charge up my phone. That shouldn't be an issue. I'm at 44%. Let's plug that in. You can see all my Wi-Fi routers are, are up and running. So if there's an emergency, I call. What you don't wanna do though, you know, I can run my furnace, but like a space heater, turn on high is like 1500 watts out. That will replenish the bat ray life on those units fairly quickly. So stuff like this, you just don't want to run. My Alexa's going, probably listening to everything I'm saying right now. I'm just saying, I got my ring, my security cameras up, all that good stuff. If I wanted to make a coffee, I can make a coffee. No, I'm going to do what I usually do in the morning and I'm going to get on and turn on my television. And I'm going to watch some news, or TV, or you know what? I'm going to watch myself. Look at that face. How can you deny it? That face is the reason 4K is this, my friends. That's real nice like. So now it's time for me to make my mid-morning snack. That would be some frozen pancakes. And considering I have 12,000 watts at my disposal, this should not be an issue. But remember, we don't have any power, such as solar, going back into these boxes. So you want to use this sparingly. We're pulling 2,300 watts right now. So if you're going to heat up baby formula or whatever you're doing, that's fine. I ran this for about a minute. Just be careful using these power-hungry items for long periods of time because you're going to drain the pet ray a lot quicker. Now, I have two questions for you regarding syrup. I call it syrup. You call it syrup or you call it syrup? And do you put it in the refrigerator or do you leave it out? I'm a refrigerator kind of guy. Oh, that looks delicious. All right, now I got to go to work now that my belly's full and I'm going to turn on my monstrous computer. This thing draws a lot of energy, as you can see. I got the flashing lights, so that's pretty for me, you know what I mean? But we're up to 750 watts in. So we got the computers running, we got three monitors going. I just fired this thing up, so it's going to draw more energy, but it's going to start working its way down once we get situated and start idling. Uh, and then I'll start using more once we start using Premiere Pro and all that good stuff. But I'm just letting you know that I have all the lights going in the office. I have basically everything running that I would have running during the day. I even have this Glacier Bay uh, water. I don't, I, don't, I don't even use this. I don't know why I have it. But everything that I would use during the day, 
I am using. I'm not trying to skimp out on using power just because of this video. I'm doing what I would usually do. I want to see for myself how long this thing's gonna run. And uh, I can't look at that face. <laughs> now, what I like about this is that this app will send you alerts. You know, if you're down too far or you know you need to recharge the system, it'll tell you you only have you know 10% left. But anyway. Right now, saying we have on the upper end of eight hours, nine hours, but that'll fluctuate, right? Depending on what's being drawn on the system, what's being taken off. Each box is using like 304 watts. So they're working in conjunction. You can see they're both going down at the same time. I think that is really, really cool. Uh, but you can flip between the boxes and see the, the information per box. Now, this is not something I would recommend during a power outage if you can help it. And that's running, you can see it says power outage because I flipped the switch, power outage. I wouldn't run my washer and dryer if I didn't have to. If you need to, then that's a different story. But we're gonna turn this on and we're gonna see if this can take it. So, my dryer kicked on. 500. Yeah, 500. 1,000. 1,000. So you're looking at like 1,000 watts. 1,200. No, 1,200. Oh, I'm watching this with you. So you can see it, it's, well, it's kind of blurred. My, I didn't focus right. But what I'm telling you is usually when you start something, that's where you're using most of the power, then it'll settle down. So it went to like 1200 and it's down around 700 watts. So this is not even a fraction of the power that I can put out on these boxes. But again, it comes down to the runtime of these. So the heavier draw appliances, you sort of want to stay away from if you can. So I did run this dryer for a couple minutes just to see if it could handle it. Yeah, absolutely. But again, this is not something that I'm going to be running. But it's not only the house that I have hooked up, you know, the shop down here. I have my shop hooked up. I got my lights going on down here, All right? So, you know, this box is running my entire area right now. So I want to be, you know, very cautious of how much I'm pulling out of this. You can see this is how it's hooked up. This is what it's looking like. And it's doing a really good job so far. So this thing has been running, both of these have been running into the house with no issues at all. I have all my lights on, all of my Wi-Fi is running, everything is running off of this. I ran my computers, I did some editing, I watched television, I watched myself, and so far I'm having absolutely no issues with these boxes, putting out the power. Matter of fact, I'm not even using a fraction of the power that these boxes can put out. But the best thing about it is, it's completely silent. There's no fumes. You don't have to worry about moving this thing outside. You don't want to put these outside in the rain. I'm just letting you know. But you don't have to worry about these things putting fumes in your home or keeping you up when you're trying to sleep like the gas generators do. They're completely silent, completely safe to operate in your house. So I'm just continually going through my day and I'm charging my camera batteries off. And I was curious, how long does an average power outage last in the US? And from what I read, the average power outage, I'm not talking about a severe outage like a hurricane or anything like that, but an average outage in the US from like a, a blown transformer or something is down from seven hours to about five and a half hours. So if this unit can push me past the five and a half or make it to five and a half hours, I would be happy with that. The other thing I wanna let you know is if I wanted to make dough, maybe I wanted to throw a pizza in the oven, the oven would work, and yes, all of my major appliances would work, and you can see it's only bringing in like 400, well, I'm sorry, pulling out 401 watts. So things are adjusting in the house. The furnace isn't running right now. My water pump, it is raining outside right now. That's pushing water out, but it fluctuates up, down. You know, you're not gonna always have a thousand watts out you're not always going to have a lower wattage out like this at 372 so you really have to pay attention to what you are consuming and again it was raining much harder than this later during the day there was a storm that came through but the sump pump was pushing that water out and it would kick on for a minute and it would kick off so it's really important to have that power on during a storm like this you definitely don't want that basement flooding because you can't get the water out but again here's both units and each one of them for some reason something's drawing they're both putting out 343 watts each. So something's running, I'm not really sure what it is, but it's pulling that power, but we're still at 76% on both units. And I have both of these units running. FYI, these are the fans that you can hear. This is all the louder it is. All right, let's just start moving this along. So right now it's 12.09, so we've had this on for a few hours now, and we're still at 67% for both units. And again, I'm using the electricity in my house like I would always use it. The sun came out for a minute. I could have went out and threw some solar panels on for maybe a half an hour, brought some juice back in, but I just want to test this without bringing any power into them. 
So right now it is 138 and both units still have 57%. The one unit's drawing 215 watts, the other one's drawing 215 watts. They're both depleting at the same time. So this basically turns two of these into one unit, which is pretty freaking cool. You can hear the fans kicking on every once in a while, but they're super quiet. This has 7.7 .7 hours. This also has 7.7 .7 hours left on the unit. So you still got some time. And again, we started these around 8, 8.30, and then 1.38. We're, we're good to go here. All right, so now we're heading down to the 45% on each unit. It's getting a little bit darker outside, especially it being cloudy. So the lights are starting to kick on in the house. By the way, if you're interested, all of these lights change colors and have different features. If you want to see those lights, they're called gobies. Let me know, and I'll, I'll do a video on those. Those are really, really cool as well. Now the kids, they're at home and they're starting to run their electronics. The wife plugged in her laptop and that's starting to draw power. The heater's kicking on and we're drawing 1,075 watts right now. And where we were normally around 350 watts, we're around five to 600 watts when the kids are home. They use up a lot of my money is what I'm saying. And then it jumps off to the thousand again, it's the, the laptops are plugged in. So we're definitely drawing more at night. And this is where the most expensive part of your day is. And this is why this is pretty cool as well. Not only can you use this during a power outage, you get the smart box, which I'm probably going to do. You hook that up and it'll automatically transfer over so you can run this during the day where your price is more expensive. And then it'll automatically switch off at night and recharge when the prices are lower, you know, off peak hours. So we're really starting to run low on time. Again, I, you know, I put my furnace on or not my furnace, my, my office heater on. I just wanted to draw some power to see where we're at. And you can see it's 644 now, hours and hours, way past the five and a half hour mark. We're still at 14% and 11%. And then it finally around, I want to say eight o'clock, it just was sending me alerts saying, hey, listen, you're really starting to get low. 640, it was 651. This thing went for another half an hour, uh, 45 minutes after that video was created. So all in all, you know, for an average power outage of five and a half hours, this thing went from eight o'clock around eight o'clock in the morning all the way to 7.30 or like 7.45 at night. That was almost 12 hours. So for those to say that this thing can't run an entire house, I just proved again that it can. And you can expand this battery with the expansion batteries to keep this thing going for days if you wanted to. It depends on how much you want to put into the system. And for that smart switch, I think it's really smart because you can run this thing during the day on your peak hours and then it will recharge at night on off-peak hours and you're saving money there. And if you like this video, don't forget to get subscribed, hit the bell notification, smash that like button. Check out this video right here. It's gonna give you more specs about that unit. And if you want to purchase this for yourself, I'll leave a shopping bag on the bottom right-hand side of this video for you to check these out yourself.